in those moments where y'all's paths are crossing, be going after God. And if it's a godly man, he will see and recognize and be interested in that. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here with my husband, Corey. And as you can tell by the title of the video, we're gonna be doing a godly dating Q and A. And I asked you guys to submit questions on my Instagram. So if you are not following me on Instagram, go ahead and do so so that you can submit your questions next time. But yeah, if you like these type of videos, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. And yeah, let's go ahead and get into the questions, shall we? Okay, so the first question says, hey Leah, how can one prepare for a godly relationship when it's their first time? Well, first of all, shout out to you for wanting to be in a godly relationship. I feel like in this day and age of dating, you know, worldly secular relationships are just so idolized so shout out to you for even desiring that i think the best way to prepare for a godly relationship is to develop and engage your personal relationship with god and to work on healing yourself as an individual if i could go back in time i wish i would have been more intentional about healing myself prior to getting in my godly relationship you know um it's so easy to focus on, I want a relationship, I want to be with somebody, I'm tired of being single and missing the purpose of the current season, which is healing, you know, grounding yourself, relying on God, building that relationship so that when you do meet your person, you can really hit the ground running and you don't have to spend time and waste time doing that healing once you meet someone because it can get really nasty, really, um, you know, just messy. So that's what I would say. Just focus on yourself and your relationship with God, and that will set you up for a good start when you do get into a godly relationship. Any thoughts, babe? Uh, I would say as far as preparation for a, a, a godly relationship, you know, I would recommend shifting your mindset to be around this idea of a God-honoring relationship. So I think godly relationships sometimes can make us think about things in a way that's in a relationship that just has characteristics that may look Christian or being in a relationship that has, you know, some Christian overtones, but being in a God honoring relationship puts honoring God at the center of that relationship in a way where everything you do um, before the relationship in the relationship um, is a result of your desire to honor and please God with your relationship specifically. So I think Leah's advice is really important to keep in mind that that has a lot to do with the version of yourself that you bring into the relationship and surrounding yourself with um, community that can encourage that type of relationship to not only start or happen, but to continue to, continue to grow in godliness once you meet somebody. Yeah, I agree. A lot of that work starts before you get in a relationship. But like we said, I think it is really great that you are wanting a God honoring relationship in this day and age that is commendable so continue to work on yourself and um you know grow closer to god and i hope that he gives you the desires of your heart yeah and lastly i'll say i think it could be difficult uh to be in a godly or god honor relationship um in isolation i don't think it's impossible or that it never happens but it, it can be tricky you know what i'm saying so um, keeping your relationship in the light, keeping the interactions of a relationship um, in the context of community and trusted individuals uh, can be really helpful too. Yeah, that's good. So the next question um, says, do you know anyone whose calling is to stay single for life? Would you like me to start off with this one? Mm -hmm. I think for me personally, um, I don't, I can't think of anybody that's coming to mind that I know that has explicitly stated that they heard God tell them to be uh, single for life and, and are walking that out. Some people, I do think God calls to singleness and other individuals God has allowed to be single um, for a you know multi multitude of reasons. I yeah, personally don't know anyone so. who's been called to singleness in that way and is, and is walking in that. Yeah, because everyone I know either wants to be married or is married just personally, or maybe they want to be in a relationship. I don't know anybody who is single and satisfied with that. So, yeah, I think to answer the question, we don't know anybody like that, but it doesn't mean that those people don't exist. And if you are watching this video and you feel completely fine with being single and you feel like God is using you, be encouraged to walk in what God has for you. 
Absolutely. Um, because it's not always gonna look like everyone else. So the next question is, how to let a guy know you're interested without pursuing. Right. So as so, a, she, so you already see somebody that you kind of like. Right. You see somebody that you already like. I would say the first thing is, if we take what Ruth did, for example, is to be doing what exactly what you know God has for you at that time. And be doing that in a way where a man who is attracted to what you're doing, which is what God has called you to do, would notice and see that, right? Especially because if it's somebody that you're interested in, I'm assuming there's some instance in which y'all cross paths, whether that be at work or at school or online or whatever the case may be. I'm as, you since you have somewhere. interest in this person, I'm assuming y'all cross paths at some point. My first recommendation would be that in those moments where y'all's paths are crossing, be going after God. And if it's a godly man, he will see and recognize and be interested in that. I feel like you can let somebody know without pursuing them by maybe like let's say y'all work together just have a conversation with them you know get to know them and actually here's the thing because I, I just really thought about it <laughs> i feel like i used to be that way when i was younger pre corey i would let people know i like them Maybe like by the time I was like in college, um, I was very direct. So if a guy showed any interest in me, I would be like, okay, I yeah, let's talk or whatever. Like I would always take the take the reins. Like I'm a type A personality, a leader type of person. It's like okay, might give a little interest. Like okay, well let's talk. Like that's how I was pre Corey. Before I met Corey, I wanted to work on that because I found it to not be fruitful. I found it to set it starts relationships or situationships off on a wrong foot. In my experience, when I would do that, it would create an imbalance in the dynamic. Like I think that men generally want to pursue a woman. I do think if a woman tries to pursue a man, it could make things a little off balance. And that's what I learned from my years of singleness <laughs> prior to being with Corey. Um, but before I got with him, I learned that I wanted to change that. I felt like the Holy Spirit was really kind of urging me to change that and to be more laid back, more reserved, a little bit more discreet and see where he or or the man, because I, I didn't know who, I didn't know Corey at that time, but I wanted a man to put everything on the table. I didn't want to have to, I didn't want to be leading it. So when we first started talking, you know, we met on social media, on Instagram, he was messaging me, you know, the way I would have felt in the past is, okay, here's my phone number, text me. <laughs> because let's get off, let's just keep, you know, let's move, let's keep it rolling. But with him, I didn't do that. I allowed him to lead. So he would say, so when he finally asked for my number, he wanted to talk to me. I didn't call him on the phone and hey, let's get to know each other. Waited for him to set a time with me. And I can't say for certain for anybody else, but for me, that's the thing that was different. Um, so I feel like you can express interest just by being kind to somebody, being talkative, being nice, you know, not being standoffish. But from my experience, I would allow the man to do the rest. Um, that's just my experience and it worked out for me and what do you think based on the way that the tone was in our relationship like how how did it make you feel I think it depends you know what I'm saying I think what you did worked you know what I'm saying I, I got to a point in my life where um, I would say where if Leah would have been too forward yeah maybe too forward that might have caused me to take steps back I think ultimately what I was trying to say before Leah's statements is that a woman pursuing a man can oftentimes tempt a man to walk outside of the what God has for his life, right? So with that being the case, and I'm not saying it should be that way, I, I, I just think oftentimes that's how it is. And so with that being the case, I think it would be from a man's perspective, from my man's pers from my manly perspective, I guess, from my perspective as a man, <laughs> okay. from my perspective as a man, I would think it would be safest for a woman to continuously um, operate in God's will for her life. And if this is a person you're interacting with, continue to ensure that you are in this man's line of sight, right? 
so that he can see you doing what God has called you to do, what you do naturally, right? Now, I'm not saying go out of your way to be in his line of sight. And I'm not even just talking about his physical sight, like be physically appealing to this person. <laughs> Walk your dog right? by his window. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> let's just say, for example, coworkers, right? Or go to the same church. Continue serving, continue working hard, doing the things that you're supposed to be doing in this, in the view of this person, if that's naturally occurring, right? Um, and if not, I would say the most forward thing that I would think that could be recommended is if a group of women and a group of men orchestrated a social event to just, you know, to hang out in a public, right. you know, safe social space. To, to, again, to, to be exposed, right? Um, and the last thing I'll say is on the other side of that, don't be tempted to give into this idea of, you know, making yourself just physically look attractive or act in an attractive way to try to attract this man. The bait you use will impact the fish you catch. You use a little say piece it, of bread. Say it again for the people in the back, child. You use a little piece of bread on that hook, you might catch a little little minnow, a little whitey. Yeah. You, you put a hunk of chicken on that hook, you're going to catch a bass. Let me, let me just say this. From a modesty perspective, I used to also dress very immodestly. And that impacted the type of men that were attracted to me. And if you really want to get your mind blown, if you really want me to blow your mind, I'll tell you this. <laughs> Not only does the bait you use impact the fish you catch if you lead with an ungodly tone whether that be overtly sexual overtly aggressive overtly anything that's not in alignment with god you can catch the right man in the wrong version i tell you this if leah had presented her way herself a certain way to me i very easily could have been tempted to receive her in a certain way so rather than looking at her as the potential wife, let me be intentional, let me be thoughtful, let me be prayerful, let me get wise counsel, this might be something real, it's, man, she's sexy, let me see what I can do with that, right? Because every the man you're talking about has a sinful nature and a godly nature. What's that right? nature you appeal to will be the nature you get. And you could potentially, um, and or unfortunately, you know, mess something up that could have been right. So my, my intention, it would be, how do you let somebody know you're interested? I think if, if a man can see you doing what you're doing, he would know you're interested, right? Like as men, we, 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 if, when we interact with women, you can kind of tell, right? I would say, just keep doing you naturally. And don't feel like you need to put on as somebody else. I feel like you kind of touched on that, but I just want to like drive it home. Like, don't, like be true to who you are. You know, I feel yeah. like that's the worst when you start uh, trying to appeal to who you think he would like. You're not right. yourself. If you're not walking in who you are, you're not going to attract who God has for you. You're going to attract who God, or not God, but whatever is for the person that you're pretending to be. So be yourself. I'm really goofy and I'm really silly. And I feel like, you know, you got to put it all on the table. <laughs> okay. Like, right. And obviously not in the trying to express interest stage, but like just in relationships in general, like be true to who you are. And I think that will serve you well. Be very prayerful, right? Pray that God helps this individual. If this is who is truly for you, pray that God helps him see that, right? So that you don't have to try to do that yourself. Two, one thing that you could do, if, if this is somebody that you're already in communication with already regularly, you noted that you're interested in this person. You could, in a very godly brother and sisterly way, affirm some of those things that have made you interested. Like, hey, I really enjoy how you serve with this ministry, or I really think you're, um, you know, really hardworking, or the fact that you do this. I think that's kind of like in the way you would compliment a brother or sister, and just to let them know that you see and appreciate some of the godly qualities that they have. Okay, so the next question is, is it okay to do counseling when dating? So I'll take this one. I feel like it is. I wish that Corey and I did premarital counseling when we were dating. That would have been awesome. Because <laughs> the thing is, we end up doing count like marital counseling down the line. You know, we tried to do it, but due to circumstances, we weren't able to do it. And I really wish that we could have found a way to do premarital counseling. And I guess what you're saying is you're dating, so you're not necessarily engaged yet. To be honest, I don't feel like you can really go wrong. Like, why not get that extra bit of wisdom, that extra bit of guidance with a Christian counselor, you know? Um, and all Christian counselors are not created equal. So I do think it's important to find one that you both would like. I do think it's helpful to 
to have those tough conversations before you are all in, before you are all invested, y'all are married, there's no way out type of thing, you know? I mean, I guess there's always a way out, but essentially speaking, like you're not in that covenant of marriage. I do think it's important to have those real conversations because let's say for example, for you, it's important to be debt free and to be financially stable. For him, maybe he has $200,000 of student loan debt, doesn't plan on paying it off and doesn't care about that. That might sound kind of minor, but when you're early on in the relationship, that might be something that's like, you know, this isn't for me. And having that conversation in the beginning can help you from being in a marriage where y'all are arguing about finances all the time. Because as far as I'm concerned, the leading cause of divorce is financial issues. So having those tough conversations before you need to can help you to narrow down, is this somebody that I wanna be with? And other than that, it's just good to talk through like your family, your upbringing and just get that extra professional help to make building something with that person easier. I think one thing that counseling does is help you be privy to things that you don't know that you don't know. So it can be intentional expert level guidance. Also, I would say I, I can't think of any biblical reason why that would be wrong. And I, I would even go as far as to say that God's original intention for people was to be in community like it should be more natural for us to be able to get wise counsel from elders and adults and people and friends and peers around us but because that's oftentimes not the case especially with biblical grounding it could be uh, you know advantageous for you to go and seek that out uh, on a professional level on a very practical level like with finances thoughts of family upbringing things that anybody would need help with and also spiritual concepts as well yeah that's true. So the next question is how to keep God at the center while dating long distance. I'll start off then. Um, I would say first, very similar to the ways that you would in person, right? Um, there's a lot of nuances that come along with long distance relationships, long distance um, courting or dating. Me and Leah know that very well. So with that being the case, realize you have a really unique opportunity with this long distance dating to put in place a lot of physical boundaries people struggle with you already have that there right so that's an advantage man play to that use those boundaries to set up even more boundaries and structure in a relationship so you have an opportunity to actually honor god as the forefront and foremost thing in that relationship also can i just I say this real quick and and don't use it as an opportunity to talk about what you're going to do when you see each other because i feel like those are the two <laughs> options like you can either go all like oh yeah when i see you it's going down versus okay like he said like let's make the boundaries so that when we are in person we can enforce them because the hard part about long distance is going from being apart to going to being together right and so what me and leah found like we when we were long distance dating and when we started interacting with each other one of the things that we said from the beginning is we want to be intentional with our relationship that was like and being intentional was one of our main goals and what we realized is in the absence of being able to be together physically that emotional sense was heightened a lot right where it's like very much so tempting to be very like affirming or flirtatious or you know having conversations that that are not god honoring but just more right. so feeding um the emotional part of you right conversations or, that just feel good right conversations that just feel good right tell Especially, me why you love me baby right you know <laughs> what I'm saying like even even to tell somebody i miss you over and over and again like that kind of like leads you down the road of right. a certain path That's of being true. able to just say you know just just being happy to be able to talk to you now or oh i, I want to see you so bad like, one thing you would always say is that emotional really leads into like the sexual right you know what i'm saying because it can feel very like innocent it can feel very romantic it can feel very affirming it can feel very uh you know romance rom-com whatever you want to talk about and it's like it feels good at the same time, it's good to be missing somebody, have somebody who misses you, but I think that's a huge danger in long, di long distance relationships, right? Because, you know, it you be don't lustful. get that, right? And it's very easy to like somebody and love somebody that you're not in constant interaction with, right? You just have these highlights. That 30 minute, 45 minute phone call yesterday or two days ago was great. Can't wait to see you again, right? Mm -hmm. And so I would say, you know, if you want to, you know, honor God in a long distance relationship, use the advantage that you have with some of those initial boundaries and make that as a way 
uh, to move forward, you know what I'm saying? Um, and use that time, that distance, that separation to focus on growing in God individually and together. You know what I'm saying? Maybe y'all do a Bible study and then talk about it when you're on a call. Like at least, so that's part of it, right? Yeah. So that the only thing isn't just a pillow talk, right? right? That like, there's a purpose to this. We're growing to this and being open to that. Um, and then that way you have a plan to meet when we get together, you know what I'm saying? In whatever capacity that may be. Yeah, I agree. I feel like to keep God in the center, you just have to do just that. And I think people would say, oh, God's already in the relationship and that is true, I guess, but you do have to invite him in. I know people be like, you know what I mean? Like, you, you know, have to invite God in. You, yeah. Just because just you're a Christian and he's a Christian doesn't mean that it's a godly relationship. Yeah, yeah please don't think you, like, are just haphazardly or accidentally having a godly relationship. It takes like, so much intentionality. It's an uphill scenario. Just like with a Christian life, the Christian life isn't easy. It is very rewarding. It is very fruitful. But if you're living a life that doesn't need God's Holy Spirit to empower you to do the things you're doing. You're not living a godly life. You're living a Christian themed life at best. Right. Right. Like Christianity and having God's spirit in you is about having the type of relationship that you couldn't have without the Holy Spirit. If you have the type of relationship you could catch on any latest dating reality TV show, that's not a godly relationship or even God honoring relationship. Even if you both identify as Christians. Even if, even if you both identify as Christians, a lot of people today and a lot of people yesterday, right? This is throughout all generations of the Bible. They say they're Christian. They say they honor God. They say they fear God and they absolutely do not. And you can tell that by the fruit of their life. You know what I'm saying? And that may be you in the relationship, right? That right. could be you. So it is very important that if you want to honor God in your relationship, you're going to be honoring God in your life. You're not going to have a God honoring relationship without a God honoring life. Like if you're already not reading the Bible, you're not going to read the Bible with your person. Not for long. You I mean, know what I'm saying? might, but it's, it's a chance. Like, yeah, unless they're like, maybe if they're dragging the you along, you set know, or tone. you're dragging them along. But, yeah. you know, the, the institution of marriage itself does not ultimately make you more godly, right? I do believe wholeheartedly that Leah and I's marriage and the institution of marriage can oftentimes be used by God as that furnace of affliction to purify you and to reveal your imperfections and, and the things that need to be more like God. At the same time, it is important that you not to rely on a relationship to be that automatically. You know, you, to bear fruit, you, you must be walking in the spirit and open to and allowing God to dictate the way that relationship goes, especially if it's long distance. So the last question is, I've recommitted my life and body to God. When is a good time to bring it up? So my assumption is that you are talking about when is a good time to bring this up when you meet a new person. I think that makes sense. Yeah, that's my assumption. <laughs> so, I mean, mm, first conversation, like, I mean, look, we talk about everything under the sun. We literally, we talk about the weather, talk about, oh, did you watch this game? You know, what'd you do this weekend? Are you saved or not? Like, you know, where, where are you at? Like, where are you at in your faith walk? You are more than able to bring it up. Cause the only thing is you might wonder like, oh, what is he gonna think about me? But shouldn't we wonder like, what's God gonna think about me? You know, more so than what these people will think of us. Yeah. If God has put it on your heart to make that a, a priority of conversation when you meet somebody, do just that. And if that turns the guy off, I would take it as a sign that this isn't the person for me. If me talking about God and giving my body to Christ is a turn off then let it be and let him run off but because you're being so honest and transparent up front with who you are and who you feel like god wants you to be it can weed out people who really aren't about it so it saves you from having date after date of small talk oh let's talk about this oh yeah you looking good and then let's say two months in you're like oh by the way i gave my life i can't tell you need to you need to be able to communicate that from the beginning and it should be clear and like we say with with as being christians and people who are actually practicing christianity because like we said everyone who says christian who checks the box is not really walking a godly life you have to be able to communicate that and not be bashful about it so yeah i if, like you're asking us i would say you could bring it up the first conversation second conversation like if it's who it's a part of who you are and you're trying to get to know me, I'm gonna put it on the table. And here's the sad part. It's sad that you have to ask that question. It's a great question and it's a reasonable, valid question. Because as Christians, when you see somebody and meet somebody before even y'all are interested or not, and you say, I'm a Christian, that should mean something. All that stuff that you want to, you know, that you feel like you have to reveal, 
should be inherently connected with your identity as a Christian. But unfortunately, it's not. Because we have individuals who today who identify as Christian and live like the world. I think you should be able to share your religious affiliations on day one, conversation one. And the fact that you have to de de define that may be a bit discouraging, but it's very much so what you should do, especially with those things that you feel like are most critical. You know what I'm saying? And when you talk about these things, it's not, so I'm a Christian, so I'm, I'm trying not to do this, or I try not to do that. Like, this is what that means for me. This is what I do and what I don't do. And be bold. Because if you do anything that leads me to do something that I said I don't want to do, before we even get to the point of doing it, I'm gone. Right. And as and, and if, you know, if for the other person, they should feel that way as well. Right. Whereas this is what I'm trying to do as a Christian. Right. This is what I'm trying to do. No, this is what I'm doing. This is what the standard is. This is what I'm aiming for. Right. right. Um, and it's non-negotiable. Right? And rely on God to help you maintain it because it's easy to set standards before you meet someone. But it's harder. Main, it's harder to maintain it once you meet somebody. So I would definitely second what Corey said. Like, that's a good question. This so good that you are asking it because it's necessary like when should i put this on the table be encouraged to walk in your truth and walk boldly in who god created you to be because honestly the people people of this world people who are not trying to live for christ you know very secular sinful people living in sin a lot like they don't have a problem walking in it boldly they don't have a problem screaming up from the mountaintops as Christians, we should be able to walk boldly in our faith and not be timid about it. What we're saying is there may be a guy or a girl who wants you announced, this is the life I'm living and these are the standards I'm living by to do my best to honor God who fall away from you because of that or that causes them to stumble. And that may just be have to be what it is. So when should you have that conversation? Day one. So that'll be it for today's video. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, share this video with anyone that you think could benefit from this message. You know, the way that social media is these days, you really gotta push out good content because, you know, it's not like everybody in the grandma is searching for Christian content, right? So please help us get our message out by sharing it, liking, subscribing, um, drop a comment, you know, if anything registered with you down below, or if you have any encouragement, for anybody who is pursuing godly relationships, because I know that it can be discouraging these days, but be encouraged and continue to live a life of righteousness and don't feel like you have to water yourself down to be palatable by the world. Be bold in who you are, be bold in your faith. And I think the world will just have to adjust to it, you know? People who are just unapologetically living for Christ in a world where there are Christians who aren't living for Christ. You know what I mean? I think it's important to be bold in what the Bible says. So if you enjoyed this video, let me know. Love to have you come back again soon. It's been a while. <laughs> so much wisdom from you, Corey. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I like to share. Um, and if anything we talk about, bring scripture to mind, drop that in the comments too. You know, Yeah. because uh, a lot of what we're saying is biblically based, but we're not pulling verses. Uh, we just kind of are sharing from biblical principles that we understand, you know, but uh Drop those scriptures in the comment section too. That's what I'd like to see. And I will also link similar Q and A's that we've done in the past with other questions. So if you have other questions, they might be answered in those videos. So I will link it below. But yeah, as always, thank you guys so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in my next one. Bye.